What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new add-on for doing crowd simulations and adding moving and animated people models to Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so Population is a brand new add-on from the guys over at B Production. So um, they've got like the tree vegetation add-on, um, they've got grass blade, um, a bunch of other add-ons as well, but this is their newest one, and it's specifically a crowd simulation and people animation add-on. Um, so there's a few different versions in here. Um, if you just wanna download it and give it a try, you can try the free version right here. So you can download that, get some of the functions as well as a couple models. Um, there's also a light version and a pro version. Um, and the light version is gonna get you about 25% of the people models in here. So if you don't need a ton of variation, that might be a good fit for you, or you can get the entire library up here. Um, and I want to jump into Blender and talk about the way this works. Um, just one thing to note about this is they've gone through and they've done motion capture animations on the people to create their own animations to try to make them really realistic. And so there's different styles of characters built in here, as well as different animations from standing to sitting, uh, walking around, talking on phones, other things like that. Um, this is set up, and we'll check this out in a second, to randomize colors of the characters in here so that you don't just have the same character repeated over and over again. And so, so the other thing is these come with an HD and a low poly version in here. What that means is that means that you've got very detailed models if you need them, but also low poly models if you're gonna have crowds kind of in the background, other things like that. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it works. So we're going to go over into Blender. And the first thing is when you install this, what you wanna do is you want to go into edit, preferences. Okay, and so when you download this, it's gonna come with four files. There's going to be the fi the smaller file that you install. Um, that's the actual add-on file itself. What that's going to do is that's going to basically install the basics of the add-on, like the things that kind of live over in your end panel over here. But then down below, it's also gonna come with three zip files. And so what you need to do is you need to set the library path, which is going to be the path where you wanna install those assets and then you need to go in and find those zip files in here and you need to um, actually install them, right? So you would select that zip file, then you would click on the button to install pack and you can install those different packs to that folder. Once you've done that, those are going to show up in your end panel over here. In order to see this, you wanna tap the N letter key on your keyboard, that's gonna pop out a little window over here on the right hand side of your page that's going to give you access to all of this. Now, when you first do this, you may need to restart Blender in order to get the thumbnails to show up. But basically what we've got is we've got two modes in here for adding people to your scene, right? You've got options for single people, or crowd. Within crowds, you've got different kinds of crowds that you can create. But let's say that we wanted to add a single person in here. Well, basically when you click on this, this is gonna give you the option for ambient or walk and run, right? So ambient is going to be people that are kind of like standing around while walk and run is going to be things that follow a path. So let's say we wanted to bring a person model in here. What we can do is we can select the kind of person that we want. So let's say we wanted to bring a business person in here. We're gonna click on this. We're gonna find a business person. We're gonna bring them in. So let's go with, um, we'll go with Bruno right here. So we're gonna take this Bruno model um, and notice how there's a number of different animations that you can apply to this person. So you've got communication, you've got daily life, um, you've got a whole bunch of different categories in here. You've got sport, which we're not gonna worry about it too much right now, but you've got people animating, all, or you've got people exercising, all sorts of different things. Well, in this case, let's bring in, um, we'll go with uh, the mail on phone. So we're gonna click on this, right? And notice how you have two options in here, the HD and the low poly. So the low poly is gonna bring in that lower poly, lighter weight, version of this model, the HD is gonna bring in the heavier one that's got more detail. And the only other thing I wanna focus on here is notice how there's a checkbox for random color. That means that if you set this and you duplicate a model or a person, it's going to randomize the color in here. But let's go ahead and click on the button for import. And so when you import this person, what it's going to do, and remember I brought in the low poly version right here, but when you import this person, it's going to place that person model over here in your scene um, based on wherever your 3D cursor is. So now if I was to click on the play button, notice how this person model is going to walk around 
talking on the phone just like this. So um, you can see how there's kind of like this central point in here for this person model that they're walking around. And um, this is basically going to loop over and over again. So notice how this is kind of like looping and restarting the animation. But if I was to set this to like 500 or something like that, um, and I think it may reset at the 250 here, we'll see. Nope, still going. But see how this person model will just continually walk in a circle right here. So this has got kind of that like longer frame animation in here. Um, so you've got all of these different styles in here. One of the cool things about this, and I'm gonna add a new model. So let's go to like a casual model right here. We'll bring in a Gary model. And we can bring in the HD version for this one. So I'm just going to set my 3D cursor over here. And I'm gonna set my Gary model to be um, standing and pointing. So we're gonna click on import. That's gonna bring in this model. Remember that this is bringing in that like higher poly model that's in here that's going to be more detailed, right? So if I tab into edit mode, notice how you can see that this has a lot more geometric detail in it than this one right here. So um, you can use either one but um, this model is going to be more detailed, but it's also going to slow down your scene more. So it just kind of depends on what you need. But if I reset the scene and click on play, notice how this person model is going to stand here and have that animation applied to them. And so one of the things that's cool about this is, let's say that we were to import the exact same model again, right? So I've still got, so I've still got the Gary model selected. If I click on import, notice what this does is this brings in a completely new version of Gary in here. And this version of Gary has a different color of clothing and he also gets imported a different point in his animation, right? So if you use this in order to bring in multiple different models, right? So if I bring another one in here like this, notice how these the animation for these characters gets offset in here. And so what that means is that means when you bring in multiple different versions of this character, the animation isn't going to be playing at exactly the same point. So you can use this to reuse the same character over and over again. And notice how you've also got changes not only in the clothes, but also in the hair of the character, which really makes it so that you can use the same models over and over again without everything looking repetitive. And so in addition to having the ability to bring in the ambient or standing, you can also add characters that are moving, right? So let's go ahead and let's bring a plane in here like this. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the rotation and scale. All right, so let's say we wanted to toggle over into the walk and the run and bring in one of these sport characters. So maybe we'll bring in like Arthur or somebody like that. But there's different categories of different animations that you can bring in here, right? The slow walk, the phone, whatever, as well as some other things like uh, running. So if we click on the run, right, we've got the jog or the run. Well, let's bring this jog in. Well, when we do this, right and we click on import what it's going to do is it's going to jump us over into edit mode and it's going to activate the draw tool well the draw tool and you generally want to make sure that you set it on surface is going to let us set a path for that character to follow so i'm going to click and drag in here now if i click on play notice how that animation is applied to that character so that character is running along the path like this and you can adjust things like the random start. You can also adjust the direction that this character is running. So notice how that kind of flips him so he's running the other way on the path, other things like that. So um, you can use this in order to create people walking or running in Blender. So let's say we did want to create somebody just walking around. We could do a casual. And so let's select a casual and we'll go with maybe this John model in here. Um, but you can select things like the walk and then I could put him in here on a phone, for example. And so I'm gonna tab out of edit mode and then click on the import button. That's gonna let me draw a new curve for this character. But I could set this character walking in a circle, talking on the phone, right? So it brings this character in and he's talking um, on the phone with that animation applied. And so there are some other tools in here, which you don't really need to worry about right now. And so most of the interesting things with this are going to come into effect when we get into the crowd settings. And so, so far we've created a bunch of individual characters, but there's also options in here for adding crowds of people. And so like, for example, I can click in here and there's multiple different options for different ways that you can generate a crowd. So if we go into classic mode, for example, that's just going to allow us to select a surface 
and it's going to allow us to add a bunch of people in here. So let's say we wanted a bunch of business people, right? So we'll add Audrey. And right now that's gonna put her as floor seated, which isn't what we want. Um, but you can set these people and what animation they're coming in with, right? So we'll bring Jack in. Jack is going to be listening. We'll bring in Jessica. Jessica is going to be checking and listening. And Tony. And Tony is going to be talking, right? So I, I can set which models I want added in here and then click on the option for import. And remember, because I set this to the plane, it's going to import all of these models and it's going to set them up where they're on this overall plane right here. Now, I don't think there is a way right now to do this with the HD models. I'm not 100% sure on this one. I would assume it's bringing in the... Uh, the um, low poly models because it's going to generate a lot of them, but I'm not really 100% sure. But we're going to click on this and this is going to generate this crowd of people. And so you've got options over here for the way that you can adjust this. And so what I want to do is I want to start by bringing this density down so I don't have nearly as many models in here. Notice how this does really kind of slow down when you have a ton of models in here. When you think about it, this is a lot of data that it's kind of uh, processing. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend gigantic crowds unless you really need them. Them. But we can use this in order to bring down our density, but then we can also adjust the distance between the people, right? So if I adjust this like this, um, notice how it's going to allow more or less people depending on the distance between the people. So the higher this distance is, the further apart they're going to be. But if I was to restart this and click on the play, Notice how all of these characters have whatever animations we had selected in here. And if you ever run into something where you've got the two characters right here that are um, just kind of like talking to the back, you can just adjust the seed. And the seed is going to basically randomly adjust the way these characters are created like this. Now you do also have options in here to do things like clustering. And so when you do clustering, what that's gonna do, I'm gonna bring my density up a little bit. So that's going to create more like little clusters of people. And you can adjust the size of the clusters using a slider right here, as well as the proximity of the clusters or how close they're going to be to each other, right? So if I bring the proximity up, notice how you're going to get fewer clusters. And so let's take a look at some of the other modes that we have in here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a smaller plane over here, one that's not quite so big, that won't have quite so many people on it. I'm going to go ahead and apply the rotation and scale. But um, let's say we wanted something different. You can do this in cluster mode. So cluster mode is going to act kind of the same way, right? So you can bring in different, um, different people models like this, but they're going to get brought in in clusters. So if we look at this, Oh, and I brought these in referencing the wrong plane. So I'm just going to adjust this and select this plane right here instead. And so notice what this did, what this did is it created like an individual cluster of people in here and I can select this, but this is gonna be driven by the size of the surface that I'm in here. And I've accidentally drawn this up in the sky, but that's probably fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my rotation and scale, but notice how cluster mode is going to do exactly what it sounds like. It's going to generate clusters of people in here. And again, you can kind of adjust the settings for the seed and other things like that. You can add some random rotation to these models if you don't like the direction that they're facing, as well as adjusting the density of characters that are created in here. But note that these are all animated as well, so they're going to actually stand around and play those animations. And so let's say we were to add an empty in here. I'm just going to set a plane axis. There's a set there's a setting in here where you can set these to look at a target. And so in this case, right, I'm gonna set this empty as the target. Whoops, that was the plane. But I'm gonna set this as the empty right here. But now, if I move this around, notice how all of the characters are going to turn and look at this empty. So you can use this in order to set the direction that all of these people are facing in your scenes. All right, so follow curve mode is cool because what it's going to do, and we're gonna go ahead and drop all of these people off the list. What this is gonna do is this is going to allow you to use a curve and we're gonna set this to a walk animation like this. But when we set this in here and click on import, it's gonna do the same thing where we can draw a curve, 
right? So it's gonna set us up where we can draw a curve in here. Like this and it's going to add a series of these characters in here. And again, notice how it's kind of like randomizing those characters from a colors and um, different things like hair and other things like that standpoint. But basically this is going to generate an animation. And I'll go ahead and jump this over like this, but it's going to generate an animation where all of these people kind of walk along the curve right here. And so you can adjust things like the spread width of the spline, as well as the number of people that are generated in here, like this. So you can also set these so that they have a random start. So let's say I was to set this to one or zero even, they're all gonna kind of like start in the same location. But if I set this to like 400, which is where it was originally, notice how they're going to be spread out along the curve in here. And one cool thing about this is you can come in here and adjust where that curve goes. And notice how those characters are going to move along with that. So you can get some kind of like fine control in here of where the actual characters are going to be in the 3D space just by adjusting that curve. You can also reverse the direction that they're going if you want them to walk the other way. So grid mode does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to add characters in a grid, All right? So you can select all these different characters. Again, you probably wanna set this to random color, but when I click on import, it's just going to create a grid of characters centered on where your 3D cursor is in the space. And then once you do that, you can set the size and spacing of the grid, as well as how many people are in here. So if you just wanna generate a grid of people really quickly, this is a great way to do that. Now you can add some random rotation and some random positioning in here. Um, and you can kind of stagger the X and Y as well, which gives you some interesting possibilities in here. But um, this is a great way if you just want more of like a uniform grid of people to come in here and make that adjustment. All right, and then the stadium mode is interesting to me because it works a little bit differently than um, other stadium modes that I've seen in the past. This one actually uses instances of objects in here to place these. So if we go into our crowd under stadium mode, what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to set a collection, right? And in this case, I've created a collection of cubes. Obviously, a lot of the time you might want like a collection of um, seats or something like that, but we'll use the cubes as an example. Well, you can come in here and you can create or add different people, right? So I'm gonna bring in maybe this Anna model and we'll go with a seated and listening right here. Um, we can bring in maybe this Kevin model and go with a different seated right here. But then if we select this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna import these models and it's going to place them based on these component instances or these, it's gonna place this on these instances of this cube in here. And so the cool thing about that is when that comes in, um, those are actually going to be placed on the, the actual seats right here. And so the talking with phone animation is probably not your best bet on this, but if we take a look at this kind of from the side, right, notice what this does is this brings all of these characters in, it actually places them on these instances. And so the cool thing about this is if I scroll up, notice how I can adjust the translation in here so that these are placed, as well as being able to adjust like the rotation of the characters that are in here. Now this one, I would like to see like a seed option um, that allows you to randomize this because I'm getting a little bit of a uniform result in here. So I would like to see maybe added in a future version, more of a randomization function on this one. But um, I do like having the ability to have the characters actually in here on an instance of an object or objects in a collection rather than having to draw like a flat face in here that it places the models on. So I'm really liking where this add-on is going. I think it's got a great collection of character models in here. The animations all look good. There are some things I'd like to see in the future, like the addition of that seed function with the stadium, as well as the ability to bring in your own custom models, um, which I haven't seen in here yet. I think that would be a cool addition. But overall, for creating crowds and population, I think this has got some great functions. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.